So it's about recommendation of podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm Elena and I work at Update. Uh, and specifically, uh, uh, it's about this app today. So Early Audio. Early Audio is a podcast app that you can download in yeah, uh, Google Store or iOS Store. And yeah, it's an app for uh, discovering uh, podcasts. Uh, so recommendation systems. So let's uh, first think about what recommendation systems uh, yeah, shall do. And um, yeah, let, let's uh, use this example of the picture. So you have a wine store uh, with an owner uh, of this wine store and clients that come in and, you know, they ask you like, hey, uh, yeah, I really like this wine that you gave me last time. And do you have something similar? Or, you know, I'm looking a wine to recommend for a friend. Uh, I want, would like to try something new, etc. So the owner of that wine store um, would uh, help you, would give you recommendations that are personalized. So ich according to your... Und ist immer noch um, sorry, I hear a voice. Maybe somebody, please, please mute. Um, so, okay, so personalization is one goal. Uh, other goal is, uh, yeah, making um, information accessible. Um, so, with hundreds and hundreds of bottles, we need to filter this information. So, accessibility. And uh, a third goal of recommendation systems is to enable. Uh, Discovery of new content, uh, discovery of novel content. And also, um, this is more from the point of view of the user that wants to discover content, but from the point of view, let's say, of this uh, wine shop owner, I mean, you also want to uh, cover uh, your catalog, your items. Uh, you don't want to have uh, wine standing around that uh, are getting dust. So this, these are like the goals of recommendation systems. And let's say the entities that we have there are users and items items, the different wines, users, the people that go into this shop. Um, yeah, so what about with this title with the chihuahuas and muffins? So actually, I, I just want to take it as a comparison uh, with the recommendation problem. So um, this is what you see, this uh, muffins and dogs uh, is a famous uh, data set for um, yeah, uh, visual recognition. So the data set uh, are those images uh, with the labels saying whether the image has a muffin or a dog. Um, and the goal, given this training data, is to have a model that can give good answers to the question on the right. Uh, let's say the model gets this picture and needs to say, is this rather a chihuahua or a muffin? Uh, well, I mean, we can see it's a muffin, but training a model uh, on this data is, is not easy, let's say. But OK, so we have data. We have training data that is clear. Um, next step, uh, how would we, uh, let's say, approach this problem? Let's say we have the image of the dog. Well, we need to get numerical data. So we can say, oh, okay, each picture has this, uh, let's say, red, green, and blue uh, channels, and we can represent them as an array of uh, numbers, something that we can feed in into a machine learning model. So what? So now we have data, training data. Uh, how do we actually measure our performance? Um, okay, let's say we have uh, this evaluation set of four pictures, um, and we give them to the model, uh, knowing what are the real labels. And the model, let's say, says in three or four cases, the model did well. Uh, the model found that there are two muffins and uh, one dog. But this upper left picture, the model said it's a muffin, but actually it's a dog, so it's wrong. Um, so we could say, uh, well, this model has an accuracy of 0.75 uh, because three out of four were, uh, and if not wrongly classified, were correctly classified. It's a typo there. Um, yeah, I mean, but we, we have a metric. And we could also maybe propose other metrics to our team and to our business uh, leaders and say, oh, maybe we have precision or recall or F1 score. But uh, in any case, uh, I mean, we could explain uh, why this metric uh, makes sense. Uh, so in this case of this uh, Chihuahua classification uh, problem, uh, yeah, I mean, our training data is clear, it's images, uh, and the evaluation metric, it's the accuracy. It's cool. We can fully concentrate on finding a model that will do this task uh, as good as possible. Mm. So what about uh, podcast recommendations? 
So in this case, uh, we can think, okay, what do we have as training data? I mean, okay, we have the data about the podcast that we have in a database, uh, let's say the podcast, the episodes, uh, and we also have um, the user behavior in the app. So we track uh, specific behaviors of the user in our uh, podcast app. Um, so that should be our training data and evaluation metric. That's not clear from the beginning. What shall a uh, recommendation problem, yeah, aim to to uh, to improve? Wh which metric? Um, so this is what I want to uh, talk about in the next slides about these two topics: training data and evaluation metric. Um, yeah. So which training data do we have available for podcast recommendations? So here you see some yeah some screenshots of uh, podcast uh, uh, like a screen and uh, on the right displaying some episodes uh, from this podcast and um, yeah we have um, properties related to let's say the content itself this can be the title of the podcast the author of the podcast um, we have a description uh, each episode in the podcast has also a title um, then we have uh, other let's say, information about the user behavior. So we have uh, things that the user explicitly um, does that show us, let's say, a preference, which can be following a podcast uh, or um, subscribe, uh, downloading a podcast or sharing it. Uh, and we also have more uh, implicit behavior of the user, which is, uh, let's say, uh, the fact that the user plays a podcast, then stops it, uh, stops playing the podcast. So we have lots of data related to the content and to the usage of this content by the users. Mm. Yeah, and again, as with the images, we need to transform this data into numbers that uh, models can understand. So, um, okay, we have the audio data that uh, we could say, ah, oh, yeah, we need, maybe we can somehow uh, transform this data, uh, audio data into text and then process the text. It's complex enough. Other op option would be, okay, let, we forget about the audio itself of the episodes and the podcast. We uh, look at the text data of the titles, of the descriptions. And then, then we apply, let's say, techniques from NLP to uh, yeah, extract our features. So this would be ways of dealing with the content. Um, the other uh, type of information we have are the interactions. So uh, here you see, um, uh, yeah, uh, how users would listen to or listen here to podcasts. Uh, so here, there, the user is connected with an arrow to the podcast if the user has listened to this podcast, and um, we can abstract this kind of interactions as a, as a matrix. What you see on the right. So um, the matrix on the right shows. Uh, uh, yeah, gives a one if the user has listened to that podcast and a zero if the user has not listened to this podcast. And it's uh, this um, matrix representation. Uh, it's a nice flexible representation because you can, let's say, add other data to it. You could say, oh, yeah, I don't want ones and zeros. I also want to measure like the strength of that interaction. So you could put uh, weights instead of zero and one, so some floats. And for instance, maybe represent uh, by how much the user listened, how, how much of the time the user uh, listened of that podcast. Uh, other option is to add, let's say, timestamp um, to this data, so you would know in which order uh, the user listened uh, to, to certain content. Yeah. Uh, now I want to just um, have a, 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 a yeah a, an overview or, or a slide. Um, uh, yeah, t telling. Um, about like which kind, which are the three main types of recommendation system that exist. So recommendation systems are like an own uh, evolving field, like in research, but in yeah, in also in industries uh, applied to industries that is evolving a lot since let's say early 1990s. And there are three main types uh, of recommendation systems. So one type is um, content-based recommendation. So these recommendation systems. Um, extract uh, features from the content itself. So they, they would extract, let's say, from the podcast or episode itself, and also and build profiles for the content, and also build profiles for the users based on that content features. So let's say if you um, read an article about mountain biking, and 
the newspaper recommends you then an article about e-bikes for mountain biking. Well, this could be a content-based recommendation because it really uses the, um, the, the content itself to, as a seed to find new content. Other family of recommender systems are the user-based recommender systems that actually learn from the interactions between users and, and items. So they don't need to know exactly what this item is about, but they learn about it indirectly by knowing how users interacted with this item. For instance, let's say Instagram could recommend you pictures that your friends have liked. Um, and yeah, this type of recommender system uh, has uh, a challenge, which is that, okay, when you have new items and uh, a new users, you don't, uh, yeah, they are not yet connected in this network. So you have, let's say, this cold start problem. Mm which you don't have, let's say, for content-based recommender, because when you have a new item, you can already extract, let's say, the profile of that item. And then the third family of recommender system is our hybrid recommender systems. Uh, and this uh, try to get, let's say, the best of these two worlds that I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, now, I would like to tell you about um, and the current prototype that we are uh, trying out uh, and testing uh, for the early audio app uh, for personalized podcast recommendations. And so this uh, model that we're trying out is um, based on a sequential model uh, from this repository that is, you see the link from Maciej Kula uh, called Spotlight. It's a nice repository, I think, for um, having like a, a sketching recommendation system. It provides sequential models and also matrix factorization models. Um, it's written in PyTorch, and um, yeah, it's uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I recommend uh, checking it out. Um, yeah, so how do we use this model? So we want to pre uh, we want to know, uh, given the history of uh, podcasts that the user has listened to, what would be let's say the best podcast to recommend. So let's say you have uh, here a user that has listen to uh, Lex Friedman's Artificial Intelligence podcast and also to Crypto Radio podcast. So, okay, so what would be a good recommendation uh, for these users? Um, and how this model is trained, is it's trained on sequence data, uh, sequence data of the history of listenings of all the users. So you, hear, you see here, let's say, three user histories uh, with the podcast that they have listened to over time. Uh, and yeah, also we include weights, meaning that let's say if, if you are you listened uh, to the whole podcast, you have a higher, larger weight than if you just maybe uh, listen to the first seconds, you dislike it and you stop playing the podcast. Um, so the training set is actually created by, let's say, hiding items from your history. And uh, the test set is, uh, is what, what is hidden. So uh, the, the model, um, aims to learn to rank items in a way that, let's say, uh, um, for instance, for user one, this uh, light blue uh, podcast should get a lower rank uh, in, in the ranking that the model produces for user one. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you see, this is a user-based recommender system because it only uses the interactions, meaning that we don't need any kind of uh, information about yeah, or the, con the podcast uh, features uh, themselves. Mm. Now, let's look at how uh, some of these recommendations um, actually turn out to be. Uh, this is from the model that we uh, tested um, some weeks ago in an A-B test. Um, yeah, so here you have uh, this example with artificial intelligence and the crypto radio. In that case, the model recommended data skeptic podcast, Tesla stuff, uh, Bible study, I don't know why, uh, uh, includes for sure diversity in this recommendation. Uh, Android, also tech, and tech stuff. So yeah. then we have here on the top right, uh, some user that listened to some, uh, yeah, more um, wholly confident, some more, um, yeah, maybe motivational podcasts or podcasts about self-confidence and, uh, um, yeah. And the model recommended, yeah, something about movies. But also things related to, let's say, uh, meditation or, or uh, yeah, learning and career. So, well, um, and here on the top down, you see uh, this is actually a quite common user nowadays. So I use it just listened once to something related to coronavirus. And um, 
in this case, uh, let's say the model would recommend you uh, as, let's say, as the top five, um, some, something also about Corona, then update of news podcast. Uh, this Ideen podcast, uh, I don't know it, um, uh, some new stuff, and this Decanto. In this case, um, uh, I, you see, like, this kind of podcast are podcasts that are popular in, in our app also. Um, so, yeah, the model doesn't know much. This is quite a, a podcast that has, let's say, many connections because many users use it, and their recommendations seem to be quite general. I mean, we can look at many recommendations, but still we don't know, we don't have yet an objective metric by looking at them. So how do we actually measure this? Uh, this is actually, um, yeah, the, an overview of uh, our, uh, of, of one of our, yeah, experiments. Uh, here we are comparing like 80 models, and how do we compare? So we say, okay, we want to have a target metric. Um, the target metric here is on the x-axis. It should measure how well does this model, uh, say, rank your next listening or predict your next listening. And this we measure by uh, the mean percentile ranking. There are other measures to do so, and there are whole papers on how to, let's say, choose these metrics and the pros and the cons. We chose, let's say, this one. Uh, but we also have a control metric, um, which is the item coverage. There we measure, let's say, how well does the model exploit all our podcast catalog? I mean, we don't want a model that uh, maybe would end up um, always recommending the same 100 podcasts uh, because we have many available, we have uh, thousands and thousands, so we want to exploit this. And we said, okay, let's say our control metric, we want only uh, models that have uh, an item coverage of more than uh, 20%, let's say. And then restricted to this, we would say, okay, uh, mean percent and ranking is best for uh, this dot here on the left. So this is how we uh, chose the models. So. I mean, this sounds quite uh, dry. I mean, like, of course, it helps choosing, but there is much more actually to evaluating um, recommendation models. So what I just mentioned, this regards like the model training that happens offline. So it's like all, let's say, the data science work of finding the candidate models uh, and the features and um, measuring target metrics and control metrics for, uh, for different kinds of parameters and models. But there is, uh, I mean, for the success of this recommendation model, there are other components that are as important. So one is uh, here on the right, you see, how do you show this recommendation? So the design, uh, the user experience. Uh, do you want to show this recommendation as, I don't know, um, uh, as a part of like a section in your app? Or do you want to have the recommendation sent via maybe a push notification? Um, so this is one point. The other point is our business rules. So um, the model, to say this model that uh, I was talking about, the sequence model, would, let's say, for every user, uh, spit out a ranked list of all the items. But you might want to post-process this list and say, OK, certain items, uh, I don't know, I want to exclude for the recommendation, or I want to have certain criteria on how fresh a podcast should be in order to appear in a recommendation. So there are lots of business rules that you need to uh, talk about, let's say, with the content experts in order to uh, yeah, have, a, yeah, have a good post-processing of your, what your model spit it out. Um, yeah, and uh, last but not least, I mean, these things come together in, a, let's say, an online A-B test where you can actually measure the performance in the real recommendation environment. Uh, where you need to take into account, let's say, the KPIs from the business. And this is, wait, sorry. Uh, and this A-B test is actually, uh, yeah, the, the part that uh, lets you learn about what was the value of your offline metrics. So uh, having uh, iterations between model training and online A-B test is important to, yeah, to learn how to actually uh, choose good offline metrics as well. Yeah, uh, this is my last slide, and I thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have time for, yeah, uh, talking.